Esther Emery. I'm the homestead wife from the DIY and homesteading channel Falchomatic Off Grid. But today you're on my teaching channel and this is hopefully going to be a fairly efficient kind of nuts and bolts video about canning corn. A couple things that I want to show you. One is that it is possible to do kind of a large scale canning project even off the grid. Today we're doing 120 uh, years of corn which for us is 70 pints of corn. Um, I also wanted to show you um, our pressure canners and give you a kind of the general idea of pressure canning and then also the specific procedures for corn. So that's what we're doing today. Here we go. To buy this corn we drove out to the farm which is my favorite way to get produce it's directly from the farmer. We, we got this particular batch from Pint Size Produce and a very, very sweet, very young farmer. We're using a pressure canner today. Corn cannot be canned in a hot water bath canner. That depends on the acidity of the food, whether it can be canned in a hot water bath canner and for how long. Corn is not a high acidic food. It needs a pressure canner. I have two pressure canners, but they're both pretty small as pressure canners go. Each one holds seven pints. To pressure can corn in pints, you need 55 minutes at your pressure. And if you're working with a pressure canner, you know that it takes 15 minutes to get up to pressure and a half an hour to cool down. So you have to double the amount of time. Uh, it isn't always double, but you have to add at least 45 minutes or an hour to your time. So it really wouldn't be possible for us to go through 10 canner loads in one day unless we had the two pressure canners going. kids shucked the corn for us. Um, the rest of it is the grown-ups. Let me show you around our setup. So I have a lot of pots on this stove. This pot over here is a water bath for blanching the corn. I'm going to blanch the corn and then we're going to raw pack it. Um, over here I have a little container that's keeping my lids and uh, rings warm. And then over on the propane I'm boiling the jars to sterilize. When you're doing corn, it works for me to peg the amounts. And what I mean by that is that I decide a certain number of ears of corn that go with a certain number of jars, and I just repeat that pattern. Even if it means the jars are a little bit more full one time or a little bit less full one time, I don't let them get too full. If there's a little extra, I'll just give it to the kids or to the animals. Um, but that way I can keep my head on straight and I'm not trying to deal with remainders. So for us, that amount is 12 ears of corn per seven pints, and for these kind of small pressure canners, seven pints is a whole canner load. So I'm going to blanch 12 ears of corn at a time. I get my nice big pot of water boiling. When it's at a full rolling boil, I drop the ears right in, start my clock time for one full minute, and then I'm gonna pull them out again. At this point, you're watching me do the second to last canner load. So if things seem a little messy around me, that's why. The corn goes right from the hot water into cold water to stop the cooking process. If you have ice, ice is a good thing to have here, but cold water will work. Now I moved things around on my stove. Um, I took the blanching water off of the hottest part of the stove and I put my pressure canner on. I've got two inches of water already in my pressure canner. Read your instructions to find out how much water your pressure canner requires, but it's some amount of water measured in inches. And you need that water to boil before you run your canner. So I've got my pressure canner sitting on the hottest part of the stove so it can come up to a boil before I put my jars in. Now I'm gonna prepare my corn. Most things can be canned either with a raw pack or a hot pack. And the hot pack usually means that you get your, your vegetable or fruit and the liquid cooked together usually cooked for a couple of minutes at least and then you put that in the jars. 
A raw pack means that I put in this blanched but still raw corn and then pour the liquid over it. A boiling water bath is a great way to sterilize your jars, but people also do it in the dishwasher or even in the oven. I'm gonna distribute my corn evenly among these seven jars. But a pint is two cups, so you know that to fill your jar, you're gonna need about two cups, so I'm using a one cup measure. It may look like I've filled the jars above the one inch headspace that's required for corn, but I know that when I add the liquid and squish out the air bubbles, that's gonna settle right down. I'm gonna use the liquid that I blanched the corn in. You could use any kind of hot water, but the uh, blanching liquid has a little bit of flavor to it, so I prefer that. I'm going to use my spatula to get the air bubbles out. Um, so these all look pretty good. I'm going to make sure there's no food around the edges here to interrupt my seal. And then I can add my lids and rings. You don't have to tighten them down too much, just snug just so they hold a position. And then I can set these jars in my pressure canner because that water has come to a boil. Now I'm gonna put the lid on my pressure canner and make sure that it seals correctly. As it heats up, this little baby right here is gonna pop up and that's gonna tell me that it has made a seal. When this pops up, I'm also gonna see a jet of steam coming out right here. When that jet of steam starts to come out and this has popped up, I'm gonna start a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes of steam needs to issue to make sure that there's no air caught inside the pressure canner. At that point, I can add the wobbler or dealy bob or thingamajig and um, it'll start to build pressure. So we wait. Here we go. This is what it looks like when the seal is made and this little thing right here has popped up to let us know. I'm gonna add the wobbler to shut off that stream of steam. Oh, that's a lot quieter. And we're gonna watch that pressure slowly start to rise. At sea level, you can can corn at 10 pounds of pressure. Um, we're a bit above sea level, so we're aiming for 13 pounds of pressure. It needs to stay at or above that pressure for 55 minutes. This would be a pretty long video if we had to wait for that, but I've got my other pressure canner 
that has the timer's just gone off. So this one's coming off the heat. If you have the kind of stove where you can just turn the heat off underneath it, by all means do that so you don't have to carry your hot pressure canner. But I have to move it off of the stove. It is extremely tempting if you have not pressure canned before to undo that vent. Don't do it. I speak from experience. It does ruin all your work. You have to let the pressure canner come naturally back to its normal pressure. It can take like a half an hour. Our other pressure canner has brought has come down to zero. The pressure's down to zero and this this one has the dealy bobber right in the center that tells you that the um, pressure is released. I'm gonna open my petcock. This is a different pressure canner, obviously. It works differently. I'm gonna open my vent completely before I open the lid. Just because the pressure is down to zero does not mean that it's not hot in there. It is still hot in there. In fact, the, the uh, cans may still be boiling. There it is. I hope it goes without saying that you won't make 70 pints of this until you're sure you like it. I love to have canned corn. I can use it for a couple of things I really like. I can make an instant salad. Lettuce plus canned corn, you've got an instant salad. It also changes pasta into a casserole like that. So it's a magic food. It's very affordable. The corn, fresh corn in season is very affordable and it's a multi-purpose food. If you have a freezer, you may want to just freeze the corn. And of course that's an option too. Many people prefer that. But if you think to yourself that canned corn is not tasty, I would encourage you to play around with your technique with how you can it, maybe doing just a few pints at a time until you find something that does work. Um, I do think it's possible to have great canned corn. These are two of our finished pints of corn. Um, it is safer to take the rings off. We do store them with the rings off. I know that's a little counterintuitive, but if you leave the rings on, they can rust, they can get sticky, they can um, be hard to open later, and also they can trap um, bugs that you don't want. So it's actually better to take the rings off. These are all ready to head up to our food storage up at the house. I'm the Homestead Wife. Thanks for watching.